Welcome to the Land House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. I decided to get into laser engraving, and so I picked up the Xtool D1 Pro laser. This thing is pretty impressive. So let's do a quick unboxing and then do a first project here. And then stay tuned for future videos where I will be doing hopefully a lot more with this machine. The Xtool packaging does not disappoint. Whoever designed this has put a lot of thought into it. Let's go ahead and open the box so you can see what's inside. So first of all, you have these two green pouches and that contains both some sample material and some instruction booklets. This right here in the corner is the laser itself. We will make sure we treat that with care. Set this over here to the side. Here's another small green box which has your safety goggles, has a little box of hardware, and then there's also a little bundle of zip ties. And now we'll begin pulling out all of the items needed to install this unit. Here's one of the side rails. Inside of here is a long metal rod, which we will need to install. This is the front plate. It does have the power button on it over here. You can see the stepper motor on this side one of the side rails, some cables, power adapter. Then we have one more rail right here. Underneath here is the other half of the power adapter. The Xtool D1 Pro seems to have a very well-written instruction or user's manual. So let's use this to get this laser assembled. So starting off here, it asks us to set each of the track pieces together. So first of all, we've got the one with the Xtool logo. That's gonna be the front facing you there. So let's get that right there. Next, we have this piece right here is going to be the back, has the little sticker on there. Place this right here. And then I have the two side rails. The one with the uh, stepper motor is going to be on the side with the logo. So logo is over here. And so let's go ahead and put this one right here. Just like this. All right, and then lastly here, we've got the other side. And they're gonna want, uh, let's see, this piece right here, and that's going to face in this direction. Next it says, take a pair of scissors. I've just got some clips here. Let's go ahead and remove this zip tie. Go ahead and snap all the pieces together, and then we're gonna be using some of the hardware found in this little box. Opening up my little toolbox here, I'm going to remove my small screwdriver. It's broken up into two pieces, so I can pull this out here and get that snapped together, just like that. There are 16 of these small screws, and that's what's gonna be used to go into each one of the holes around this frame. I just flipped the frame around because the long screws with the blue paint on them are the tensioner screws for the belt. So I'm going to simply install these and it's going to tighten down the belt on each side. After the screws have been put into the tensioners, it's time to get the metal shaft installed. So one side goes here on this end of the belt the other side needs to have this little barrel sleeve. Slide that on there. And then to reach up under here and press this down into the hole. It's covered up by the main control board so it can be a little bit hard to see. There we go, got that installed. 
Moving to the other end, I'm going to line up the stepper motor shaft to this new shaft here. I'm going to pick the whole frame up and set it on end. And then I'm going to push both uh, sets of sliders down to the very bottom. Once both of the sliders are all the way down, I can then make sure that this is fully tightened to make sure that everything is aligned properly. It's time to take this cable here and connect it from the main board over here to the stepper motor. In order to keep this cable away from the moving parts, these zip ties are included and they go through this little hole right here and just simply lock down this uh, little cable to the rail. The extra length here can just be snipped off. Now it's time to remove the white zip ties from this middle piece of the frame. I'm going to make sure all the black ones stay in position though. This just keeps all the cables in place while being shipped. All right, so you can see those cables are now loose. Power to the stepper motor is simply clicked into position here. The top bar is going to rest between these two sliders. And I'm gonna make sure that the stepper motor is facing the power button side. Go ahead and line these up. And I'm going to be using the red tipped screws to get this installed to the frame. A blue belt tensioning screw goes on to this side right here. There are three cables left here that are color coded. So a white one needs to be pressed down in here. It can be a little bit awkward to get to. Let's see if we can do this here. Getting those three wires in there was the worst part of the whole build so far. Finally got them. All right, there's also one more right over here that needs to be done. It's this uh, very small cable right here. So just goes to these limit switches here. More zip ties can be used to hold this cable right here along the side to keep it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this whole piece up just a bit here and get this started up under here. And that completes the basic frame assembly. There were a couple of issues that I had. The first one is that these connections down here for those wires were quite difficult for fat hands to press in. And the next issue I'm having is with cables. So they're wanting to, I guess, uh, bow up here and not hang down below the unit, which I would like them to. So I may have to do some adjustment with all of that because if this is to uh, roll through here, it will kind of rub that and uh, will eventually break it. And the next issue is this one right here is uh, in the way as well. So it's just got too much cable. So if the laser were to slide here, it's gonna hit that one and rub it right there and uh, just push it along. So anyway, some cable management needs to be done to get this wrapped up here. All right, the next step is to move on to the actual laser itself. Here is the X-Tool laser. Now I'm gonna reach in here with a fingernail and remove the little uh, film that's on this threaded hole here. That little protective sticker did not wanna come off of there. All right, so now I've got the air assist tube here. I'm going to place that into position and then just spin this until it is nice and tight. I was unable to get the air assist tube into position because this thread was too far to one side and the uh, guard was uh, blocking it. So I had to remove the guard and then there's a set screw back here. I just loosened that up and tilted this to the side and now I'll be able to uh, thread that properly. So I can reattach the guard here and uh, now that hole is lined up as it should be. So, all right, good. That's what the air assist tube is supposed to look like. It also comes with this little cover, which is supposed to go down in there, just like that for now. All right, there we go. That is that. 
So let's go ahead and get this attached to the rest of the frame here. I'll bring this forward a bit so you can see that. And then this uh, cable right here, uh, where are we? There we are. Should just uh, attach right down in here. All right, and then this right here will just slide down into position. There we go. In order to protect this cable, it's supposed to go into this little clip right here. See how easy that is to do. All right, not too bad. That'll just keep that into position so it won't be moving around. And the last thing before completing this assembly is to add the TF card. And that's gonna go right down here in this hard to see spot. Makes a snap and it is done. And there we go, the assembly of the X tool is now complete. The uh, assembly was pretty straightforward. I only had issues with those uh, two things, the cables being a little bit uh, too far up here and then having to get those uh, other cables snapped into position there up under here. The instruction booklet itself was straightforward and quite easy to understand. One thing to note is how uh, difficult it was to place the bar up under there and also to get it over here as well. I moved the X-Tool laser up here to my top shop and I have everything set up and ready to go. So uh, it looks really nice up here. I had to uh, get the power cord plugged into the wall, which you can see circles around over here and then attaches right here. I have also connected the USB cable, which then goes down to my PC down here. So there is a power button right here. When I click that on, you will notice that there is a red X over here, and that's gonna be the starting point for uh, engraving. So I have this piece of cardboard. I'm gonna move that over here, and let's just put it right there for now, and you'll see that I can move that around. Also, keep in mind that the glasses need to go on anytime you're working with the laser, so go ahead and put those on. Now, if we move over here to the PC, there we go. Uh, so you need to install the X-Tool program, which is already installed. I also had to do a little update, but it's just called X-Tool Creative uh, Space right here. Load this up. Now there are lots of options, but we're just gonna do a simple test here. So I'm gonna bring in an image and let's just bring in my Seth Craft logo. Open that up. Yep, we're gonna scale that down. Now this is way, way too big. So we're gonna move this to about right there, nice and small. And let's put it right here. And so now we're gonna move over here to the power and I'm gonna move this up to about 50. And the speed, 80s right, is fine right there, but I may move it up to, let's say, about 112, just for the fun of it. All right, go down here to process. Now here over on this side is where you can adjust the laser to fit the correct spot. So when I push this, I can come over here and see that's gonna move. So what I wanna do is find my starting point. Right there should be fine. And now uh, if you look down here, it's kinda hard to see, but right here is where I've got it. I could have done center or bottom or anywhere of those points right there, but right here is where I want it, so. And if you go up here, this green dot represents where it's going to start. Let's go to framing down here. Now there is the button right here, which is kind of a multi-function button. But if I press this, you'll see this kind of do the outline of where that image is going to be placed. So I can come back over here, say the framing is now complete. And now up here on the top is the start button. My glasses are going on and let's press this start button. Now it's ready and waiting for us to begin engraving. This is the start button. There we go.
Now my cardboard piece is kind of sticking up there, so um, it may have some weird funky stuff going on, but we'll see how it looks. All right, let's take a look at it here and see how it has done on those settings. So you can see it did burn through a bit right there. Now this is grayscale, and so it has uh, put more power into the black, less power into the gray, but you can see that it does have the Seth Craft logo engraved into this cardboard. I hope you've enjoyed this first look and assembly video of the Xtool D1 Pro Laser. Now I'm going to have a lot more content on this in the future. I have the Air Assist tool and the Rotary tool that I'm going to be uh, working with here. And I'm going to have a whole lot more content over on my Seth Craft Workshop channel. So I will have a link to that in the description down below. If you want to check out more information on the Xtool Laser, I will also have a link to their website down below. This thing is incredibly intuitive, especially the software is uh, just immediately uh, intuitive to bring in images or text and start engraving. So definitely worth checking out. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.